This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome in. I hope you had a great weekend. And here we are. It is Martin Luther King Day across America. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. And it's cold as well. Right. You should know that. How cold is it? Huh? <laughs> right. <Super. laughs> you got that right. It is now 631 and honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today will be live in downtown Lexington where today's annual events are right now getting underway. And if you're headed downtown, just bundle up. We're tracking temperatures in the single digits on this WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Also this morning, a Kentucky man is now suing the neighbor who shot down his drone. Yeah, you want to cover up those hands, the extremities, the feet, the nose, the ears. It's just brutally cold outside this morning. We're in the single digits, a couple of teens down south, but you throw in those winds and we're below zero. Brutally cold this afternoon. I'm going to show you the cold temperatures and also some snow in your forecast coming up. And because of the impact of this, it is a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day, and it is all about those cold temperatures. If you plan to be outside today, definitely bundle up. You may want to put on layers. With temperatures this cold, doesn't take too long for something like hypothermia. Thermia to set in. WKYT's Mike Byer is live with some tips on staying warm. Hope you're doing that. Guys, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you don't have to be outside, then don't. Trust me. Take my word. You can see my breath right here. If now, if you have to be outside, make sure you wear plenty of layers. Use common sense. Wear gloves. Cover your ears. Anything like that that'll keep you warm. With wind chills this morning, wind chills are expected to be well below zero. So once again, stay inside if you can. Other important factors to take in when the temperatures are dangerously low like this is to make sure that you check on the elderly as they are more susceptible to hypothermia and frostbite. Also, if you have pets, make sure you're keeping them inside when possible. The rule of thumb for pets is if you're cold, they're cold. Meanwhile, the homeless are at major risk when the temperature drops. That's why the compassionate caravan was activated last night. They find those in need, giving them supplies for the frigid nights and also offering them a ride to a shelter. Now, if you see someone who needs warm gear, needs to get inside to a warm place, the Compassionate Caravan asks that you call this number, 859-913-0038. 859-913-0038 is that number. It could be the difference between life and death. Now, frostbite and hypothermia are also, they can also set in when the temperatures are dangerously low like this. So in order to keep yourself from getting that with, when you're outside, once again, wear plenty of layers, gloves, items to cover your ears. And once again, just use common sense. Be smart. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right. Good advice there. A group of volunteers in Lexington was out in the cold all night trying to make sure others stay warm. The group drove around downtown Lexington looking for people in need of warm clothing and a, a place to stay. Last night was the coldest night of the year so far. The group's goal is to get everyone inside and avoid losing another life. Earlier this month, a homeless man froze to death in Lexington. Volunteers say no one in need will be turned away. Well, despite the cold, hundreds of people planning to celebrate the life and honor Martin Luther King Jr. That'll be in the streets of downtown Lexington today. The legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. being commemorated on this federal holiday. This year's annual Unity Breakfast is underway right now at Lexington Center. WKYT's Mark Barber is live for us with details on today's event now getting underway. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. And you can see really the focus of the Unity Breakfast here printed on the front of their program. Program. They want to turn rhetoric into reality today. Now, take a look. They just started serving breakfast here. And what that really means, turning rhetoric into reality, is taking those ideals that Martin Luther King Jr. really championed, those ideals of peace and unity, and rather than just having conversations about them, they want Lexington to be known as a city that really welcomes everybody to live and work in harmony. Now, they're getting started with all that today, right now. We just started serving breakfast here at this sold out event, this uh, annual Unity Breakfast. Now, for 22 years, they've been doing this 1500 people packing in here this morning now uh, people are really starting to settle down starting to dig into their breakfast here but the events those will stretch on throughout the morning uh, when people have wrapped up here in uh, heritage hall about 10 o'clock this morning they will head out onto the streets uh, many many people hundreds of people will be marching starting from vine street and then really looping their way through downtown and that is likely going to be a difficult march today we just heard from mike buyer you know he was really shivering out there in the cold we heard from micah harris 
just how dangerously cold this is. Yeah, if you plan to take part in that march, you're looking at wind chills today, possibly as low as negative 10 degrees. So really be prepared to step out into some dangerously cold, bitter air this morning. Now, once that march wraps up, people will be heading back here to Heritage Hall around 11 this morning to hear from Danny Glover. He is a well-known actor. He's a well-known political activist. Now, you might recognize that name from his roles in uh, lethal action, his roles in uh, the color purple. Well, he will be speaking here this morning, and he says he really wants to talk about those issues of social inequality, of social justice, many of those same issues that Martin Luther King focused on. Take a listen. You know, right now, Dr. King would be 87 years old, but he was 39 years old when he passed away. And that passed away, but he, was, he died of gun violence, something we're still dealing with today. He died because of racism, something we're still dealing with today. Still a lot to look forward to today. Of course, everything just now getting started, starting with that Unity Breakfast here this morning. As we go through the morning, of course, we will keep you updated as to everything happening here in Heritage Hall and out on the streets in downtown Lexington. So stay tuned right here to WKYT. That's the latest here from Heritage Hall. I'm Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you. It's always a wonderful event down there. And marches and other events are planned today across the country, in fact. This is the 30th anniversary of the federal holiday honoring the slain civil rights leader. The King Center in Atlanta has scheduled a remembrance ceremony at Ebenezer Baptist Church. In South Carolina, civil rights leaders are planning to march to the state capitol in Columbia. With the Confederate flag no longer flying above the state house grounds, the new rallying cry is for increased education spending. All three main Democratic presidential candidates will be there. A central Kentucky community continues to rally around the family whose six-year-old son was murdered. Logan Tipton was stabbed to death during a home invasion last month in Versailles. His family was honored last night by the city's mayor and the American Legion. An American flag was given to the grieving parents and commemorative coins were given to each of Logan's siblings, ages 11, 7, 9, and 4, who were in the home when their brother was killed. They are the true little warriors. He acted and reacted without thinking, basically put their lives on the line to save each other. Well, the Tipsons say their children are holding up well. They're trying to maintain a sense of normalcy, staying busy with school and activities. The time this morning is coming up on 6.38, and a Laurel County man is in jail accused of pouring lighter fluid on a child's hand and setting it on fire. London police have charged James Stark with assault and wanton endangerment. Police say Stark told them that he and the 8-year-old were playing a lighter game, and the child got hurt. Officers say neither Stark nor the child's mother took him to the hospital. School administrators saw the wound and contacted police. It's definitely a second degree burn. It's not a first degree. It's not just redness of the skin. It's removal of the skin. Who plays a game by catching somebody on fire? The child is now living with his grandfather and is expected to make a full recovery. Police say Stark could face more charges. Police have put out a picture of a man accused of robbing a Lexington gas station. They say a man pulled a pocket knife on the clerk at the shell on North New Circle uh, Broadway at North Broadway yesterday. Uh, this is who police say is responsible. They say he ran off toward the railroad tracks in that area. Police in Johnson County arrested a man accused of breaking into homes and using his dog as a lookout. Deputies got a call last night about a burglary in the West Van Leer community. When they got there, they found a pit bull outside a home. Deputies caught 60-year-old Kenneth Meek inside the house. They say he admitted to breaking into another home Saturday. If you run into a situation like this, it can get uh, it can go south in a hurry. Lucky for us, this guy was unarmed, other than his vicious dog. Meek is charged with burglary, criminal mischief, and public intoxication. A Kentucky man is wanting $1,800 for his drone that his Bullitt County neighbor shot out of the sky. John Boggs has filed suit in federal court against William Meredith. The Courier Journal reports this morning the charges against Meredith were dismissed for firing a gun within city limits. Meredith said he worried the drone was spying on his teenage daughters on the back porch. In his lawsuit, Boggs says the drone was too high to photograph anyone. He also denies that he was snooping on his neighbors. Well, the man caught on camera attacking his Uber driver is now suing for $5 million. Ben Golden was a marketing manager for Kentucky-based Taco Bell. He was arrested and fired after this October dash cam video in California went viral. 
In legal documents obtained by CNBC, Golden says the driver is responsible for the injuries he suffered and that the recording was illegal under California law. The driver, Edward Cabin, has filed his own lawsuit. Let's get a check of traffic right now and see what's happening. Probably pretty light on the traffic. <laughs> That's right. Let's go out to Officer Don, check on live drive traffic out there at 98 Won the Bull. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it is a quiet morning right now. As we would expect with the holiday, traffic flow reduced quite a bit on the north side. In fact, uh, there's hardly anything happening on North Broadway, Newtown Pike. Russell Cave looks good, and so does Nicholasville Road. You get a live look outside at traffic flow. Everything's in the green. Now, downtown, of course, with some of the events that we're having, you're going to have some street closures, uh, but things are, are pretty manageable right now, and throughout the morning, you just have to keep that in mind. Uh, let's get a look at our drive times on the way in. Uh, we are good to go for so far with no major problems from Nicholasville, about four. 14 minutes from Paris is 18, and Richmond right now take about 29 minutes. Now back to you in the studio. Okay, should be a good ride in for those who do have to go on this federal holiday. Thank you, Don. 6:41 on WKYT this morning. Well, he's no globetrotter, but he made it pretty look look pretty easy. Highlights of Michael Harris's professional basketball debut after weather. <laughs> You'll see the stroke. Trust me, we'll show it again. Six degrees there in Lexington, eight in London. We're talking extreme temperatures. We'll have that next couple of days. Then the snow comes. I'll have that in just a few minutes. We actually have a little snow down toward the southeastern zones. This far solar severe weather day is not for that. It's actually for the cold temperatures outside. This is just kind of one of those things that just doesn't help us out. How Rogers Parkway, 421, go up 15 from Perry County. Into Breathitt Mountain Parkway. Mountain Parkway, that is the area that I've heard to be the most concerning because we actually have that snow falling. It's not much, it's very, very light, but it's just enough to fall and stick to these cold roads. I mean, we're at six degrees here in Lexington, nine degrees there in Jackson. Mountain Parkway, anywhere from six to about 10 degrees. So it's extremely cold this morning. You throw in those winds, and you're talking wind chills well below zero. Minus nine right now in Lexington is the way it feels. Get into your afternoon, 16 degrees. Now we'll have a mixture of sun and clouds. Those flakes down toward the southeast, those will fade as we go through the day. Off into the evening and overnight, we do it all over again. Seven degrees tomorrow morning. Then we hit Wednesday, okay? So Wednesday. It's going to be a lot different. We'll actually be in the 30s. It's going to be a, a heat wave there on Wednesday compared to what we are right now. But we'll throw in that snow, and it's widespread snow. There's no doubt about that. We're very confident in the fact that we will see some snow. Uh, the question is how much? Well, I'll tell you this. This passes through there on Wednesday, starting off in the morning hours, finishing off late afternoon, off into the evening hours. And then we're looking at anywhere from 1 to three inches of snow. Okay, so this is what we're going to be watching out for. And this is a European model that we like to really uh, hone in on because it does the best on forecasting snow events uh, for the most part. But most of these models are showing one to three inches of snow. So a couple of inches of snow is likely, uh, but maybe three, uh, as high as three inches of snow out of this. We'll see. Look at Fort Knox showing up back toward E Town at 4.2 inches of snow. So there's a lot to really talk about the next few days. Cold air today and tomorrow, then snow there on Wednesday. Then we take about a 12 hour break late in the day, Thursday off into Friday. Here comes another system. It's going to be barreling on through. That'll give us more snow that will be likely there on Friday. So Wednesday and, and Friday will be your best chances of snow. And then it clears out there for the weekend. But let me tell you guys, uh, kids are out of school today because of Martin Luther King Day. If it wasn't Martin Luther King Day and this was just a regular day, then we're talking about kids maybe being out of school because of the cold. And then tomorrow, still very, very chilly. Then Wednesday, maybe out of school there for snow. Then Friday, maybe out of school there for more snow. I mean, we have a long week ahead where it could get interesting there for the kiddos getting out of school. Yeah. Maybe a few days during this week. I, remember, I don't make these <laughs> calls. Say. I don't make these calls. I'm just saying the forecast. Is, uh, is conducive for maybe yeah. a few days here and there. So those uh, superintendents and others will have some decisions to make, possibly. Definitely have to watch right. the forecast, right? Okay. You had a big weekend, didn't you? Big weekend. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, was you stay blast. up here for this one because we want to hear all about it. If you happen to be at the Harlem Globetrotters game over the weekend, you may have spotted a familiar face. Look at him there, meteorologist Micah Harris. There he is. Took the floor for the World wow. All Star Saturday night at Rupp Arena. He made a free throw and even a jumper. Uh, 
to win the globe. This one, don't watch well, this. Hang on. No, don't uh, watch this. Well, no. Uh, oh, uh, the that was, perfect angle. I had bragged on you it all morning. It was virtually half court, okay? He said, you shoot it from that four-point line, the four-pointer. I said, no, I'm good. He said, no, <laughs> you shoot it. I said, okay. <laughs> okay, now, is it true that, that the uh, the Globetrotters asked you to join their team? As, they did. Yeah. They did. But I turned them down. I yeah. really enjoy my job here. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, uh, uh -huh. I'm pretty happy with being here. <laughs> Good job out there. Uh, oh, man, it was that's good. That's fun. I mean, not a lot of people can say they have uh, played on the floor or up arena, so that's uh, neat. Let's look at that one one more time. Bam, Swish. baby. How about that? Wow. Just don't show the air ball again, okay? <laughs> and then the intimidation set in, right? Yeah, right. see that other one. Well, here's, here's the other one. Sorry, Mike. Let's Here's this one. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, a little, bit, far. Uh, a little bit off really to the far. right there. Oh, <laughs> right there, I was going, you set me up. You set me up. <laughs> Good to have you with us on WKYT this morning. It is 648. We have more news. Stay with us. Welcome back in. It is 651 on WKYT and 6 degrees right now in Lexington. Ooh, man. Feels is, colder. Yeah, that's rough, right? Yeah. Well, the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. being celebrated on this federal holiday. In Lexington, events are underway right now with the annual Unity Breakfast at the Convention Center. The Freedom March will be following at 10 o'clock in the cold weather this morning. And that's before actor and lifelong activist Danny Glover will deliver this year's keynote speech at the commemorative program at 11. That program, by the way, is free and open to the public. If you plan on taking part in today's march or to be outside at all, be sure to bundle up. Temperatures are in the single digits. Wind chills are below zero. In Lexington, volunteers are patrolling the streets this morning looking to save lives and make people comfortable. Last week, a homeless man froze to death. Some shelters in our area say they are in need of donations. If you would like to help, check out WKYT.com. Authorities say one person is in custody following the death of a police officer in Danville, Ohio. The sheriff in Knox County says police received a call just before midnight from a woman saying her ex-boyfriend had weapons and was looking to kill an officer. The officer's body was found behind the village municipal building. Authorities say Herschel Jones the third, was arrested after a short chase. Democratic presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders went toe-to-toe -to -toe on gun control Sunday night while Martin O'Malley struggled to be heard in the debate. After it was over, Clinton celebrated with her supporters. Ouija Jang has the story from Charleston. Bill and Hillary Clinton greeted supporters and posed for pictures following the final debate before the Iowa caucuses. Earlier, Secretary Clinton and Bernie Sanders clashed on a number of issues, starting with gun control. He voted for immunity from gun makers and sellers, which the NRA said was the most important piece of gun legislation in 20 years. Clinton slammed Sanders for voting repeatedly with the NRA, but the Vermont senator pointed to his lifetime rating of D minus with the powerful gun lobby. I think Secretary Clinton knows that what she says is very disingenuous. Fiscal policy and health care reform also dominated the discussion here in Charleston. In the wealthiest country in the history of the world, we should have health care for every man, woman, and child as a right. There are things we can do to improve it, but to tear it up and start over again, pushing our country back into that kind of a contentious debate, I think is the wrong direction. I have Former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley was also on the stage, but he struggled to get a word in. I, I don't think there's been a single debate where we left people saying they heard too much from Martin O'Malley. A new poll gives Clinton a big lead nationwide over both Democratic rivals, but Sanders was unimpressed and quickly mentioned he is winning in the New Hampshire polls and he's tied in Iowa, where voters are set to caucus in just two weeks. Weija Jang, CBS News, Charleston, South Carolina. 6.54 on WKYT and on WKYT.com, the bitterly cold weather certainly has our attention. Temperatures in the single digits. Micah says today we'll be topping out in the mid-teens. While most schools are closed for the MLK holiday, we do have a few closings and delays on our website you can check out. Also, stay ahead of winter weather with the WKYT weather and traffic app that you can download for your phone. You can also read about how the region is responding to the cold and how you can help those trying to make it more
more bearable for those who have to be out in the cold. That includes the compassionate caravan that is going around in Lexington. Also trending this morning, Richmond police busy dealing with theft cases at the J.C. Penney store. Store managers say there were two separate incidents where customers tried to leave with hundreds of dollars worth of stolen items. To the south in Whitley County, vehicles broken into at three different churches during Sunday morning services. Items were stolen in each case, and police have released a picture of a suspicious vehicle that may have been involved. Uh, you can see that on our website, by the way. Again, the wind chills could be around 10 below zero for this morning's Freedom March in Lexington. Kentucky.com is a list of all the MLK events going on around the bluegrass today. We were uh, showing Micah in the video just a little bit ago. Well, now this is uh, from his Twitter this morning. We'll uh, get over there and, and, and show you uh, something. Well, Sorry, that went away. But anyway, <laughs> there's a picture of him showing the distinct height disadvantage uh, that he was at uh, during the big game that went on uh, down there with the Globetrotters. CBS This Morning following us with your eye opener and our local updates. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram. And for the latest anytime, WKYT.com. Yeah, we have pretty good traffic flow outside. We're just getting an update out at Bluegrass Airport. Five degrees. Here in Lexington, that is your temperature. We're seven degrees in Richmond. Throw in just a little wind, five miles per hour, ten miles per hour, and you can see minus nine right now in Lexington. That's the way it feels as you step out the door. Minus eight, Richmond, <clears throat> going to Cynthiana, into Mount Olivet. Those areas typically are the cold spots. And yeah, we're roughly minus ten in the northern zones, minus ten to about minus eight. Brutally cold this afternoon, guys, at 16 degrees, and then we look toward Wednesday. I think Wednesday when we see our next best chance and some snow. Right. Take a cue from Rebecca. Turtleneck. Turtleneck. Huh? Turtleneck. Yeah. Turtleneck. Nobody's more up to date than you. Thank you for being with us. Have a good one.